At the end of The Hobbit, Bilbo returns home to Bag End, where he lives in peace for the next 60 years, until the beginning of The Lord of the Rings. But what happened to the remaining dwarves of Thorin's company in those 60 years? And what did they do during The War of the Ring? At the end of The Hobbit novel, Thorin, Feely and Keely died on the battlefield in the Battle of the Five Armies. How this is described in the last chapter is much less dramatic from what we see in the film. Feely and Keely heroically attempted to protect their uncle, but died in the battle. And Thorin Oakenshield himself dies on the deathbed, asking Bilbo to forgive him. He here tells him almost the exact same thing he does in Peter Jackson's adaptation. If more of us valued food and cheer and song above hoarded gold, it would be a merrier world. This quote is much more powerful in the book, however, where greed is a big theme throughout the story. In the extended cut of the film, we get to see Thorin's funeral and the coronation of Dane Ironfoot, where he is crowned king under the mountain. We see Thorin with the Arkenstone upon his chest and Orchrist at his side. But what we don't see is who placed it there. In the book, Bart placed the Arkenstone on Thorin's breast. Thus, nearly a thousand years after its discovery, the Arkenstone was buried once more in the depths beneath the lonely mountain. Thranduil placed Orchrist upon Thorin's tomb, where it was said to have gleamed ever in the dark if foes approached. This really shows that in the end, they learned to respect each other, something really beautiful that sadly was left out in the films. I think it would have improved especially Thranduil's character arc. It shows that in the end, forgiveness and friendship are worth more than gold and gems. But what about the rest of the company, those that survived the battle and made a new life for themselves in Erebor? After the ending of The Hobbit, Dane continued to rule as king under the mountain, and Bart was crowned king of Dale. Seven years after Bilbo returned to the Shire, in the autumn of 2949, Balin accompanied Gandalf to visit Bilbo in the Shire. Bilbo noted that Balin's beard was many inches longer. The three friends talked for hours, and Bilbo learned of the new prosperity of the kingdom under the mountain and the restored town of Dale. King Bard had rebuilt Dale in 2944, and men had gathered to him from the lake and from south and west. Lake Town was refounded as well, further north, and was more prosperous than ever. Smaug's bones could still be seen from the shore of the lake, but the people were always fearful of it, and no one dared to go into the water to retrieve the gems or gold. Many of the longbeard dwarves longed to return to Moria. Dane Ironfoot counselled against it, but Balin mounted an expedition in 2989. Though a small gathering, both Ori and Oin decided to follow Balin. The dwarves hoped to regain the lost treasures of Khazad Doom, and Balin had also hoped to find the Ring of Thrall. The Ring of Thrall, originally known as the Ring of Durin, was one of the seven rings given to the dwarf lords in the Second Age. We also see this in the opening of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. These seven rings, given to the dwarves, were used to gain wealth and help further increase their riches. The Ring of Thrall was the first of the seven rings to be forged. While Sauron himself gave the dwarves their rings of power, this one was originally given to King Durin III of khazad by Celebrimbor. What Balin didn't know was that Thrall had given this ring to his son Thrain, so they falsely believed it could be found in Moria, where Azok had killed Thrall. Balin and his expedition entered the Dimril Dale, and saw before them the Lake of Miramir. After a brief battle with the orcs, the group entered the Great Gates and the First Hall. They stayed in the 21st Hall, and here Balin set up his throne in the chamber of Matabul. He proclaimed himself Lord of Moria. For five years the colony thrived, and they even sent messengers to Erebor to inform their kin of their doings. In Moria, the dwarves managed to find many old treasures, such as Durin's axe, gold, and mithril. But this great venture would soon come to an end. On the 10th of November, 2994, as Lord Balin went to look in Miramir, an orc archer fatally shot him from behind a rock. The dwarves killed the archer, but many more orcs came up the Silverload River. After a short battle, and with Balin's body rescued, the surviving dwarves retreated back into the first hall and barred the east gate. Eventually, the bridge of Castle Doom was captured, along with the second hall, but only after a great battle there. Many of the dwarves were slain in this battle. Oin led a small group of dwarves west, hoping to find and escape through the doors of Durin, but the Watcher in the water killed him, and of his group only four returned. The remaining dwarves with Ori retreated to the chamber of Masabul, where they placed Balin's body in a tomb. There Ori wrote the last pages in the Book of Masabul, before he and the last few remaining dwarves perished in a final stand. 
After receiving no news from the colony for 25 years, the dwarves of Erebor became worried about the fate of their kin. As a result, Dan Ironfoot sent Gloin and his son Gimli to Rivendell to seek news about the colony and warn Bilbo that the servants of Sauron was looking for him. In The Fellowship of the Ring, Book 2, Chapter 2, The Council of Elrond, Gloin tells us the following. Then about a year ago, a messenger came to Dane, but not from Moria, from Mordor, a horseman in the night who called Dane to his gate. The Lord Sauron the Great, so he said, wished for our friendship, rings he would give for it, such as he gave of old, and he asked urgently concerning hobbits of what kind they were and where they dwelled, for Sauron knows, said he, that one of these was known to you on a time. At the council, Gandalf reveals the actual fate of Thor's ring. Balin will find no ring in Moria, said Gandalf. Thor gave it to Thrain, his son, but not Thrain to Thorin. It was taken with torment from Thrain in the dungeons of Dol Guldur. I came too late. At Rivendell, Gloin told Frodo that Bomber was still alive and living in Erebor. In fact, Bomber appears to have used some of his wealth to increase his girth. He was so fat that he was unable to move alone from couch to table and required the aid of six young dwarves to lift him. Dane's refusal to help Sauron led to the Easterlings invading the lands of Dale and Erebor. At this time, Bart's grandson, Brand, was king of Dale, and he was at war with the Easterlings along the river Carnan, but they defeated him, and he retreated back to the city of Dale, where he was given aid by Dane and an army of dwarves. This battle takes place at the same time as Sauron's forces besieges Minas Tirith. After three days of fighting, the dwarves and men were driven back, and Brand was slain. Defending his body stood King Dane, who had over 250 years old, was not feeble, and still could wield his red axe with great skill. His skill, however, was not enough, and he was slain as well before the gates of Erebor. Many dwarves and men took refuge in Erebor and were besieged. Leading them were Dane's son, Thorin Stonehelm, and Brand's son, Bart II. Here they would hold off the Easterling for several days. After ten days under siege, the Easterlings received news from the Battle of Pelennor and how Sauron were defeated and the Tower of Barad-dûr had been destroyed only two days prior. Seeing the morale of the foes being sapped by news of victory in the south, Bart and Thorin managed to lift the siege on March 27 and drove the Easterlings out of Dale and back into the east. This battle was extremely important. As Gandalf remarks, had the Battle of Dale been lost, the forces of the west would have been crushed regardless of the victory at the Battle of Pelino Fields. Bart II became King of Dale, and Thorin III Stonehelm became king under the mountain after the battle. They sent their ambassadors to the coronation of King Elisar. Dale and the kingdom under the mountain remained in perpetual friendship with Gondor, and they were under the crown and protection of the King of the West. We don't know if the other dwarves from Thorin's company took part in the battle, but we know they were still alive, so it is very likely, with the exception of Bomber, that would have been too fat to move to the battlefield. The death of the dwarves is unknown, but would likely have been in the Fourth Age. We know Dwalin died in 91 of the Fourth Age, and got to the age of 340, which was remarkably old for a dwarf, and he might have been the last member of Thorin's company to die. After the Lord of the Rings, Gimli returned to Erebor with news and would talk to the new king under the mountain. He told Thorin Stonehelm about the fate of Balin and his colony and how he had found his tomb in Moria. So that is all we know about the dwarves and their fate after the Hobbit. I'm planning to make a video about Balin's expedition, so let me know if you want to see a detailed version of his story. Thank you all for watching and farewell.